Hello, my name is Darren Thomas, and I am the Director of Educational Research Techniques. In this video, we're going to learn how to make bar graphs using the Plotly library in RStudio. So let's go ahead and see what we can learn. All right. So what we're going to do here is we're going to, of course, load our libraries first, and then we'll start making our plot here. So the first thing we're going to have is these four libraries. Plotly, of course, ECDAT and Line2, that's where our data is going to come from. ECDAT is a package that has lots of different data sets that you can use for demonstration purposes. In line number three, we're going to have dplyr. This is for data, manipul data manipulation, excuse me. And the last one is forecast, which is also for data manipulation. Now, the first thing we got to do is prepare our data. So what we're going to do here is we're going to make a little table that has our data for our first bar graph. So right here, we're going to take data from the PSID data set, which I can go ahead and show you what that looks like real quick here. We've talked about this, I believe, in other videos. So this is what the data set looks like. You can see here we have several different variables, about eight altogether dealing with age, education, earnings, hours, number of children, and marital status. We're going to pull from there. And so what we're doing right here in line seven and eight is we're going to count the number of people by their marital status. And then I'm going to display this output in uh, line number nine, excuse me. So I make it and then right here, just so you can see it, and so we're going to put this information right here in the console in our actual bar graph. So you can see here, number of people who are married, never married, widowed, etc. This information is gonna show up in our bar graph in a second. So uh, let's go ahead and now make the plot here so you can see that. So starting down here in line 11, we're going to call, for, first off we're gonna take our uh, little data set we just made here, our married table, that's what we created, and we're going to use the Plotly function on it, and we're going to put married as our x-axis and the count as our, as our y-axis or for our y-values. And so don't forget the little tilde in front of it. The tilde button, if you're new to coding, is right next to the number one on your keyboard, but you have to hold down the shift key for that. And then the, the last thing we're going to pipe in here, because we're using these piping feature here, is the bar. That's going to create the actual bars for our little graph here. So we press Control Enter. Let's see here. Control Enter. There we go. It's thinking, of course. Give it a second. And now, if we go over here, you can see that we have our little interactive graph. Again, we've talked about this in prior videos, how this interactive graph works. When you hover over it, you get some information. So these are the married people, and there's 3,071 of them. And then you can go across like that, et cetera, et cetera. You can, of course, zoom in, pan if you want. So move it around like this. You can uh, select a certain area if you desire. So like right here, I select that area right there. And then I can zoom in right there if I really wanted to. As an example, you can of course zoom in, zoom out, auto scale it again. So it is normal. You can highlight different bars if you want. There's all kind of really cool things you can do here. That's the power of it. All right, so let's go ahead and go back here to our code. So now, one thing you can notice here is that our bars are kind of out of order. I mean, they're not out of order, but often to make things look nice and neat, we want to, of course, um, have the bars go in descending order. That's just you know a data visualization um, best practice rule. And so we can, of course, address that by um, reordering the bars. So let me show you how we do this. So here, starting in line 15 down to line 19, we're going to reorder the bars. So what's really important for our purposes is this stuff right here in line 16 and 17. So what's happening right here is we're using the mutate function. Um, that's a common uh, tool when you're using dplyr. 
to, to change the characteristics of a variable, if you will, or a column of data. And we're creating this variable here called married, basically. And what we're doing here is we're using this, um, this function here called factory order. And that's going to change the order that our categories in our chart appear in. And so it's going to take the variable married. Again, we're just renaming it. We're, we're overriding it, if you will. And we're going to use the in. That's like the count, how many of them. And this dot desc, dot descending, if you will, that means put them in order by in and descending value. So the highest value, the group with the most is going to appear first, then the second, etc. From there, the rest of the code is the same as last time. If you recall right here, this information here in lines 18 and 19 is the same as what you saw in lines 12 and 13 right here. So we're going to go ahead and run this. All right. And so you can see we have all of our bars in order now. And again, this is often more appealing visually. You don't necessarily have to do this, but it's easier for the audience to kind of follow and see what's most important or what's most common, what's least common, etc. And so that's the power of being able to do this. So all we had to do really in reality was just add this little line of code here in line 16 and 17. And that was it. And don't forget to use your little pipes in between each function that you want to call. Now for our next trick, the next trick that we're going to use here, we're going to take a look at how to label the axes and we're almost done here. So if you want to label the X and Y axes, I will show you how to do this. I've showed you how to make titles in other videos. Uh, can't reteach everything, but here's the code right here. Now here's the thing. This information right here in lines 22 and 23, you've already seen this actually all the way to 25. All this is the same as the previous plot. So I mutated the married variable. I put all the categories in order by their count. Uh, lines 24 and 25 is for making the actual bar graph. What is new for us in this situation is this information right here. Uh, what we're doing right here is we're, we're uh, manipulating the layout. So, the, you know, the, bar, the titles, the axes, and et cetera. So we have uh, something for x-axis and something for y-axis. And all we're doing is putting in this little list here. So for the x-axis, we're putting in the title of marital status. That's going to be on the x-axis. And then right here for the y-axis, we're just going to call it count. And then we also have an argument called show grid true. That's going to show the grids in the background. You'll see that in a second. And so that's what we're going to do here. So everything else is the same. We're still taking our information from that Mary table. We made way back at the beginning of the video. I press control enter to run this. And there it goes. And so you can see right here, everything's in order. But if you look way down here at the bottom of the screen, you'll see marital status under the X axis. And if you look way over here off to the side, you'll see count on the Y axis. That's the only thing that is new here besides these grid lines. So you can see we have grid lines going horizontal and vertical as well. You don't need these. I just added them to show you the potential of what you can do, but that is also there as well. Okay. Now our next trick is going to be the hover information. So we can manipulate that as well. This will make more sense when you see it. So go ahead and put this in here like so. Now what's happening here is we're no longer using our table that we made way back at the beginning of the video. We're pulling straight from the data this time. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to count how many people are married. That's the first thing we're going to do using this function right here. Then we're going to call our plotly. This is all the same. We've seen this in the past for the most part. But what's new here is that we're going to put the hover info, info to yes. This is on by default, but you can manipulate how it works. And that'll make more sense in a second. And then lastly, we're going to, of course, add our bars like always. So we're going to go ahead and run this. There it goes. Notice how we don't have the bars in order this time because we did not put that in the code. And so you can see right here, if you look at the hover over, now only the number is there. It used to tell you the name of the, of the group or the category as well, but that's been removed because of how we manipulated 
the uh, code off in the upper left hand corner here. And so now I just have the counts, that's it. And so you can of course play with this. In other videos, I'll show you how you can add to this and have multiple lines inside your hover over information. But this is just to show you again, the potential here. Now we're going to do one more trick. And so what we're going to do here is we're going to show you how to make a stack bar. And so with the stack bar, you're able to see, uh, you know, subgroups inside each bar. That's kind of how it's set up. And this will make more sense when you see it, of course. So here we go. We're doing lines 35 to 39. So this time we're taking from a different data set math level. This time, this is another data set inside the ECDAT uh, library. And so we're going to count sex, you know, male or female and major. So whatever their uh, major is in college degree major. And so for Plotly again, we're going to put X or excuse me, we're going to put sex on the X axis. We're going to put the count on the Y axis and we're going to color things by major. This is what's new. We're adding an additional variable to our plot by using the stack bar plot. And so then after that, we have to, of course, pipe in our add bars. This is what creates the bars. And then we're going to manipulate the layout again. And we're going to say the bar mode should be stacked. That's what's going on here. So we're going to go ahead and run this. All right. Give it a second. All right. There we go. And so you can see here in the upper right hand corner of the plot, we have the little legend here. So green is humanities. It looks like orange is economics, I guess, whatever these are. And then you can see here that inside the bar, it tells us how many male and females for each one of these. So we got all together. These are all the males we have all together. And it looks like 79 of the males out of the looks like 380 or so 370 were other major among the males, 144 were economics major. And you can see overall, we have more men than we have females in this particular um, data set. And so for females, it looks like, you know, 48 were OSS major, whatever that is, etc. So you can see again, this is another way that we can manipulate things. And of course, we can borrow things from other places. We can add in like the hover over argument. We can start adding labels and everything like that. There's lots of th ways to combine these different tools that we've talked about here. So let me see if I can kind of summarize what we talked about and wrap up this video. So in this video, we learned how to manipulate bar graphs using the Plotly library inside RStudio. So we started by, of course, loading our packages. And then we naturally took a quick look at the, um, the data set that we're using most of the time. We made a table for our purposes for the first few plots here, our first few graphs. We learned about how to uh, make bar graphs, of course, how to reorder the bars when you're trying to make a chart for, you know, to make it visually pleasing. We also learned about how to add axes, X and Y axes labels to the, to the chart and uh, how to manipulate the hover over information. And lastly, we learned how to make a stack bar chart for our purposes. So again, I want to thank you for listening and watching. My name is Darren Thomas. I am the director of educational research techniques. Take care.